Welcome to the Rapid City Area Schools Facilities Presentation. Thank you for viewing this video. We value your feedback and your participation in this process is critical. As many of you know, we have a number of facility issues that need to be addressed. I am going to tell you why it is critical that we prioritize these issues. Over the course of the next 20 to 25 minutes, you are going to hear about a preliminary recommendation to our Board of Education. This recommendation comes directly from our Facilities Task Force. About a year ago, we convened a Facilities Task Force made up of RCAS families, staff, and community members to look at our current facility needs. Their goal was to develop a master plan to take to you, our community. After more than a year of studying this issue extensively, they believe they have a solid plan. Still, the task force, school board, and our administration want your input on their preliminary plan before the task force brings its final recommendation to the board. It is so important that a plan is developed that truly reflects the needs and wants of our community members. Before we talk about our needs in our district and unveil the task force's proposal, I want to show you a quick video from our task force that will give you a glimpse of what they were working on this year. I'm a lifelong Rapid City resident and I also am a product of the Rapid City school system. So at this stage of the game I can look back and really appreciate the value of the education I got as a young person growing up in this community. So I saw the task force as an opportunity to give back in keeping with the investment that a lot of great educators and coaches made in me as a young person growing up in this community. So now I'm the mom of two high schoolers and this seemed like a great way to help our community continue to move forward by investing in our schools. I was originally even asked to be on the task force through my job at the Chamber of Commerce. The longer I sat on the task force, I realized how what I'm doing has a much longer impact because I don't have kids yet, but I will someday. Well, initially I wanted to be on the task force because I saw how lacking our facilities were where I went every day. Initially I joined the task force because we have four daughters in the school system and as we moved back to Rapid City after living away for many years, two of our kids were forced transferred um, immediately when we got here and they, they got put into that system of not being able to go to the school they were supposed to go to. As a member of the Board of Education, I thought it was important for me to understand and know what's going on and as a retired school personnel I thought that I had a little bit of more of a background than, than maybe some of the other members of the board. So I thought it was important that I had that type of understanding of what, what was going to happen and what was going on because this is an important process. Being part of the task force actually gave me the opportunity to see quite a few schools that I had not been to yet. And honestly, that was a real eye-opening experience to see the diversity and the disparity of conditions available in our schools. And we have some great, bright, shining examples of great educational settings, but more often than not, we have a lot of old buildings in our district. Going into this process, it really showed me the, the overcrowding, the lack of space, the data facilities, the impact every school, every level had because of our aging facilities. The opportunity gap that exists for students who may be in an older facility versus the newer ones. As someone who's very entrepreneurial and hands-on learning minded, realizing that that's a gap that exists for our students right now. And it's not necessarily a curriculum issue, but it's a facilities issue. I think that's what really surprised me most. I was just amazed at the ages of those buildings. You know, it just makes me imagine how much money are we putting into these buildings for a maintenance project? and do they still meet the needs of our 21st century learning for our students. That was an important thing and we'd heard that discussion and so forth, but the tours of the buildings really opened my eyes to that. We started looking through all of the data on the facilities as far as the condition of the buildings, the condition of the grounds, the capacity of the building functionally and really what was actually happening and the safety security and there's so many schools that are barely meeting those standards and that there is a huge need everywhere in the city. And the need is so great that it would be really irresponsible not to do anything, and it's not really a choice. 
Obviously, our world has changed pretty dramatically over the last 30 years. Technology has changed by leaps and bounds. Certainly, our security concerns have changed dramatically since I was in school here in Rapid City. And as a parent, that's one of my primary concerns and the reasons why I think we really need to take a look at our school facilities and make an investment in them. I know it's going to cost a lot of dollars for us to reach our goals, but we're spending so many of those dollars on buildings that we're going to have to replace anyway. If we don't address the facilities, you're going to have people who don't want their kids going to this kind of school system. We're going to have families moving out, which will have an economic impact. Most importantly, and something that people don't consider, is our students will fall behind because they aren't going to have the opportunities for more lab work, more expanded education opportunities if we don't change our facilities to keep up with what the future is demanding of our students. I liked the, the strategy taken with the Facilities Task Force because it involved a fresh set of eyes from a really diverse group that got highly engaged and involved and were committed to learn, took tours of many of the school facilities, and I think it just adds perspective and provides feedback from a variety of walks of life. We're putting together a plan that I really believe in and I really think it's really what is best for everyone in the city, not just our family. I really believe it's time to continue moving this community forward. It's time to make an investment in our schools. It's time to make an investment in our kids. And all of this is for the betterment of our Rapid City community. As the task force has worked this past year, it became clear that we need to address our facilities' needs in four key areas. Our aging facilities, capacity issues that already exist at some of our schools, coupled with current and future growth, safety and security concerns, and the need for environments that are conducive to 21st century learning. I'll discuss these further, but first, let's take a brief look back in time at our facilities. Rapid City was booming in the 1950s and 60s following the opening of Ellsworth Air Force Base. More than half our 23 schools were built between 1949 and 1963. The average age of our schools is 53 years old, and these structures are wearing out. In 1950, the population of Rapid City was just over 25,000. Today our population is approximately 75,000. While our schools were built well and have lasted many years thanks to great maintenance, they were not built to handle a population that has literally grown three times in size. Decades later, these are some of the issues we are dealing with. The maintenance of our buildings is very expensive. Finding replacement parts for our aging infrastructure is very challenging because too often, the parts simply aren't made anymore. For example, toward the end of the school year two years ago at West Middle School, we had to get special permission from the fire department to finish out the school year because the fire alarm system broke down and could no longer be repaired. Because we had to wait for the replacement parts to come in, that work happened over the summer when students were no longer in school. We have many crowded classrooms with some schools beyond their capacity. Our city's population is shifting to the south, east, and southwest, putting a lot of pressure on the schools in those areas. Further, our community and schools are growing and will continue to grow with the impending base expansion and other workforce development efforts. There have been dozens of school shootings in the last two decades, and as a result, schools have had to rethink safety and security, including safe entrances, cameras, and Alice drills, just to name a few. We have to design our structures with safety and security in mind today, like these pictures of East Middle School depict. More than ever before, with so many of our schools having entrances that are open to the rest of the school and its classrooms and annexes, requiring students to travel back and forth between buildings, we have many safety and security needs that need to be addressed. The demands of a 21st century learning environment look very different than the demands in the 1950s and 60s when most of our schools were built. We need more room for STEM and computer labs, flexible learning spaces for collaboration and hands-on learning, and infrastructure to support ever-changing technology. This picture of a math lab at East Middle School is a great example of 21st century learning. With a movable wall open between two classrooms, teachers can co-teach, providing more flexible flexible learning 
opportunities for students from both classrooms to work collaboratively in small groups as well as independently to accelerate and support learning. These reasons and more are our why. Why we are having this conversation and why we convene the Facilities Task Force. Again, with these issues in mind, the group has developed a preliminary recommendation, which is what you are going to see now. A group of citizens spent close to a year studying the needs of our schools. The task force is recommending a facility plan to address four top priorities. Aging facilities. Did you know our average building is 53 years old and more than half of our buildings were built between 1949 and 1963? way back when the average cost of a new house was just $7,400. Back to my point. The plan will also address increasing enrollment and a shift in the city's population, safety and security, and last but not least, the need for 21st century learning environments for kids like me. Without further ado, here's the task force's proposal. To relieve overcrowding at Corral Drive in the southwest part of Rapid City, the task force wants to build a new elementary school south of Catron Boulevard and west of Highway 16. This means that many of the new students who go to Corral Drive would go to a new school. Due to the condition of Canyon Lake Elementary, capacity concerns, and more, the task force is recommending that the district close Canyon Lake. That means boundaries would shift and Canyon Lake students would move to another school like Meadowbrook. And since there will be room at Corral Drive, some kids will move there. The task force also thinks a new elementary school is needed in the Parkview area in South Rapid City. With the opening of this new third elementary school, Robbinsdale Elementary, a building built in 1953. That's 66 years ago would close. A third new elementary school will be built by Vicki Powers Park. With the opening of this facility, students at Horace Mann Elementary would go to attend school at a brand new building and students who live north of the interstate will no longer have to be bused all the way to the west side. Pinedale, Meadowbrook, Knollwood, and Black Hawk would all receive funding for safety and security upgrades, playground improvements, and steam squared labs. At the middle school level in phase one, both south and west middle schools would be rebuilt on the same sites. That's a long time coming. Stevens High School would receive dollars to build a new fine arts wing and do other much needed maintenance. The Jefferson and Lincoln buildings could be sold and the programs in those buildings would move to Rapid City High School, where there is excess space. Finally, many of the district's deferred maintenance needs would be taken care of and both Central and Stevens High Schools would receive dollars to address needs related to Pathways programming. Phases 2 and 3 wouldn't begin for at least 5 years, but as of now, they include a rebuild of South Park Elementary School and another new elementary school on the city's west side. The last two phases include numerous renovations for schools at all levels throughout the district, including a library renovation at Central High School and security upgrades at Stevens High School. That was a lot of information. Let's recap. The preliminary recommendation of the facilities task force for phase one, which is the next three to six years, includes three new elementary schools, one north of Catron Boulevard, one in the Parkview area, and one on the north side by Vicki Powers Park. Since new schools will open, older buildings will close including Robbinsdale, Canyon Lake, and Horace Mann. Pinedale, Meadowbrook, Knollwood, and Black Hawk would receive renovation dollars. Two middle schools, South and West, would be rebuilt on the same sites. Stevens High School would receive funding to do major renovations and additions, including a new fine arts wing. Jefferson and Lincoln could be sold and the programs currently in the buildings will move into the extra space at Rapid City High School. And all of our buildings will receive funding to address high school pathways and deferred maintenance needs. Whew, that was a lot. It's a good thing all of this information is available on RCAS 
www.thepeopleforward.info. I know that was a lot to take in, and you probably have a lot of questions. We're going to use the next few minutes to explain the plan further. Here to help explain how the group decided on this proposal is our facilities manager, Kumar Velaswamy. Thank you, Dr. Simon. As Dr. Simon said, I am Kumar Velaswamy, RCAS Facilities Manager. I served on the task force and will give you more information about how the task force decided on this proposal. At this point, you have heard mention of MGTF America facility study. This study was crucial to the task force's work. The firm came to Rapid City in 2015 and did an assessment of our facilities. The scope of the study included review of our educational programs, school capacity, enrollment projections, technology readiness, educational suitability, buildings and site conditions. The buildings were given scores on each of these factors. In order to develop the plan that you just heard in the video, the task force members examined the study and then made a plan that they feel will have the most impact, addressing building condition needs, capacity, growth, and more. You've heard Dr. Simon speak today about the shift in Rapid City's population, which has resulted in capacity problems, particularly on the south, east, and southwest sides of Rapid City. As a result of capacity issues, some schools have higher class sizes and some students have been forced transferred. Here's a quick overview of our most pressing capacity concerns. Canyon Lake Elementary School has a current capacity of 302 students, current enrollment is 403. We are over capacity by 101 students. We are handling this right now with annexes, which is not ideal. The projected enrollment for 2025 is 440 students, which is 138 students over capacity. Corral Drive Elementary School has a current capacity of 446 students, Current enrollment is 490. We are over capacity by 44 students. The projected enrollment for 2025 is 531 students, which is 85 students over capacity. Black Hawk Elementary School has a current capacity of 387 students. Current enrollment is 400. We are over capacity by 13 students. The projected enrollment for 2025 is 550 students, which is 167 students over capacity. Finally, Valley View Elementary School has a current capacity of 617 students. Current enrollment is 618, which is only one student now, but the projected enrollment for 2025 is 736 students, which is 119 students over capacity. We have been working closely with the city and created this map to show you where growth is planned or is currently happening. Residential properties that are already being built in Valley View and Rapid Valley areas will have over 2,000 housing units. To the north, there will be more than 1,000 housing units. And to the south and southwest side, there will be over 500 housing units. So, it's clear, Rapid City is growing. The Facilities Task Force assessed all this information and came up with a potential solution that not only solves capacity issues, but also takes into consideration future growth and allows for the closure of three of Rapid City's older school buildings. The new elementary school proposed along the Highway 16 corridor would address the capacity issues at Crowell Drive Elementary, along with the future growth in that part of Rapid City. With the addition of this new school, Canyon Lake Elementary would close, boundaries would be drawn, and students in that area would be shifted south to Meadowbrook or Corral Drive. Additionally, the new Highway 16 building would relieve pressure from Wilson Elementary. Right now, nearly 200 students from the far north part of Rapid City are bused to Canyon Lake. With the addition of a new school in the Vicky Powers Park area, these students would no longer be bused to the other side of town. Additionally, many of the Horseman students would go to this school. Plus, boundaries would be reconfigured for the Knollwood Elementary and General Beadle Elementary areas, which would help address the capacity problems at Valley View. Right now, some students from this area are currently bused to Valley View. These students would now attend a school in an area that is closer to their homes. The third new elementary school proposed by the Parkview site would address the capacity issues at Rapid Valley and Valley View by capturing all of the homes in this area. Additionally, Robbinsdale would close and those students would be attending either South Park, Grandview, or the new school. The task force also recognized the needs of South and West Middle Schools. We would be building the new schools to replace South and West at the same sites, with no changes to the current use of the community centers. 
This first phase also includes Stevens High School renovations and additions. That will include a fine arts wing and other program needs. In addition, steam squared labs, playgrounds, and safety and security upgrades will be done in several schools. This just gives you a little insight about how the task force members came to the conclusions they did regarding this proposal. Now, I'll hand it back to Dr. Simon. So now, let's address the elephant in the room. How much is this going to cost, and how are we going to pay for it? A general obligation bond is the funding mechanism the legislature provides for school districts that need large-scale facility improvements. The Rapid City School Board has not asked the public to support a general obligation bond in decades. And to provide some perspective, Sioux Falls has passed three during the same time period the most recent just last fall for $190 million. As a district, we have worked very hard to be good stewards of our tax dollars and have been able to do a number of projects without a bond. However, we're at a point in time where we have mounting needs that are happening at the same time. Aging facilities and infrastructure that need to be replaced, growing enrollment and capacity issues that are only getting worse, safety and security needs, and outdated learning spaces that are not conducive to 21st century learning. Trying to use capital outlay funds to build one building every decade simply won't address our needs, as the needs far outweigh that funding. Furthermore, the upkeep of these aging buildings is costing the district millions to maintain every year. They're a huge drain on our budget and could quickly become a crisis if we have to shut a building down and find an alternative place for students to go to school. The estimated cost to do all of these projects is $250 million. This slide shows the estimated annual tax impact on a range of 2019 property valuations. To find out the impact on your property taxes, you can go to the tax calculator found at rcasforward.info and put in your 2019 property value to see how a property tax increase for $250 million will impact you. For example, if your home is valued at $250,000, your approximate annual tax increase would be $49.38 a month, $12.35 a week, or $1.76 a day, half the cost of a gallon of milk. We're going to conclude our presentation with a brief survey, but first, I want to thank you for taking the time to view this presentation today and for providing us with your feedback. If you have an iPhone or have a code reader app, you can take a picture of the QR code on the screen to take the survey, or you can put the URL in the search line to access the survey. Again, thank you for your presence and your valuable feedback. What we hear from you today will help inform the development of the task force's final recommendations to our school board.